Okay, the next thing I'd like to talk about is something that plays a very big role in my playing, as well as the music of Dream Theater, and that's odd time signatures, or even just odd approaches to common time signatures. Um, the thing with odd time signatures is, and to me this is the same concept that I use in, in all of drumming and, and rhythm uh, in general, is it all comes down to numbers and counting and arithmetic and stuff like that. And that's always the approach I've had with coming up with my drum parts. You know, I try to, try to always look at, at the numbers and try to think of different ways to combine different numbers to reach, you know, to reach a, an end or whatever. The first thing I'd like to talk about is odd time signatures. And to me, I've always had the approach where I, I don't see why it's any easier to play four beats per measure than it is to play five beats or seven beats. It's, it's all a matter of counting and doing the arithmetic. And um, that's an approach I've always had when I'm coming up with my parts, and I'd like to share some of these theories with you. Um, playing four is obviously you have four beats per measure, but you could break that down to eight eighth notes per measure or even 16 sixteenth notes if you really want to get, um, you know, particular. So uh, when, when you're playing a bar of four, you're counting one, two, three, four. So obviously, if you're going to play a bar of five, four, it's the same thing as four, four, except you're adding an extra quarter note. So you would count it one, two, three, four, five. And the same goes for seven or nine or any, any, it's all combinations of numbers. And in fact, they all break down to twos and threes. So everything could be broken down into those common denominators. So first, let's, let's look at 5-4. Uh, like I said, it's basically, there's, there's a couple ways you could look at it, but one would be playing it the same as a bar of 4 and adding an extra quarter note. So I'm going to play a bar of 4 and then play a bar of 5, and you can hear how it's just one extra quarter note. Here's the bar of 4. Easy, right? <laughs> so now you just add an extra quarter note and you'll have one, two, three, four, five. Now, there's a couple of different ways of looking at it. Uh, you could also look at a bar of five as a two and a three, or a three and a two, or any combinations like that. Now, seven, four is the same theory, um, but there's a couple of different ways to play it. Um, you could play it as a bar of four and a bar of three. You know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Or you could do three and four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. It's all numbers. So um, I'll play a bar of seven, four, so you can feel what a basic bar of seven, four feels like. count that, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, bump. Now, one thing, uh, it starts to get a little trickier. I mean, that's all pretty easy, but it starts to get a little trickier when you start dealing with eighth notes, uh, bars of seven, eight, five, eight, nine, eight. And what you're basically doing is subdividing the beats into twice the value, eighth notes, and you're counting them twice as fast. Um, for instance, a bar of seven, eight, would be counted the same way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But one trick with, with seven, for instance, um, seven is the only number from one to ten where there's actually two syllables. You know, you seven. So a lot of mistakes, uh, a lot of times people make the mistake of counting a bar of seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, that's not right. You gotta, what I, one trick I've always done is just count sev. One, two, three, four, five, six, sev. One, two, three, four, five, six, sev. Because if you say seven, a lot of people treat the ven as an extra beat, and you're actually playing a bar of four or eight, eight, which is the same thing. So that's some of the theories with, with the odd time signatures, and that's the general concept behind them. Like I said, it, it's all a matter of arithmetic and just counting. I mean, that's very, very important when playing odd time, signature, odd time signatures, is counting. And count out loud so you become comfortable with the grooves. Now, what I'd like to do is show some ways to combine some odd time signatures and uh, come up with 
creative beats and stuff using them. For instance, um, most people, if they were handed a piece of music or, or um, somebody came in with a progression that was 16 beats long, the, um, the, the first instinctive thing to do for a drummer is to play four bars of 4-4 four, four within those 16 beats. Well, I always like to look at music in terms of numbers and think of, okay, how can I get to 16 beats? I don't, you know, everybody plays four bars of four. So I'll think, okay, how do I get to 16? You could play two bars of 5-4, which give you a total of 10, and then maybe two bars of 3-4, which gives you six. So 10 and six, you have your 16. Or you could try breaking it up into different combinations, maybe a bar of 7-4, and then a bar of 5-4, which gives you 12, and then maybe a bar of 4-4. Four, four. So what I'm going to do right here is show you uh, some of these examples and play along to um, a drum machine, which is programmed into 16 beats, broken up into four, four bars of four. So you can hear a crash on the top of each bar going 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, 4, 2, 3, 4. And then on the 1 of, of every 16 beats, you're going to hear a whistle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play two bars, uh, two sets of four bars of four. Then I'm going to play two sets broken up into the first example, which I said, five, four, five, four, three, four, three, four. Two sets of that. And then two sets of the second example, which I gave, which was a bar of seven, four, a bar of five, four, and a bar of four, four. So here we go. Okay, now I'm going to get a, a little help from my friends here, and uh, John and Derek are going to play along with me, and I'm going to uh, play through a couple of Dream Theater songs and show examples of uh, not only how I played my, my parts, but how I came up with these parts. And uh, we're going to show some songs that use odd time signatures so you can get some ideas of different feels and stuff and different applications for odd time signatures. So we're going to start off with um, a song from the Awake album called Voices which is uh, the opening riff that we're going to play through is in 9-8. And uh, the way that I phrase the 9-8 here is taking a bar of 4-4, four, four, which is the equivalent of 8-8, eight, eight, and adding an extra eighth note. So instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, you're going to add an extra eighth note. So it's actually going to be counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 1. So that's the idea here. So uh, I'm gonna sh basically the first part of of this uh, of this beat is just outlining that kind of groove, just counting a nine eight in in that kind of phrasing. So here it is. <laughs> 